Chapter 52 Wedding Arrangements Two weeks were very little time for everything that needed to be done. They called Janice when they got home from the cottage. She squealed in excitement first and then went into a panic. Calm down, Jan. It's going to be very small. Call it an elopement with nearest and dearest. Sandwiches will do. We really don't give a hoot. Janice wailed. Christina was not to be contained. She was skipping like a spring lamb. Aggie was already sewing away and Pete fled the house. Danny called Fred and asked for two more days of leave to make arrangements. We have no furniture, she was laughing. We don't have anything, really. I've saved up enough that we'll have a start. We're not going to have any luxuries, but we'll have the necessities. Are we going to call Johnny? I think I want to talk to him in person. He deserves it, and I want to see his face. They went to see the minister and made arrangements. He could fit them in on the 8th of March. Sudden weddings were the order of the day, and a license could be obtained within a day. I need to let my parents know we're going ahead. She sent them a telegram. Received letter yesterday, Danny and I going ahead. Getting married March 8. Wish you could be here. All our love. Her head was in a spin. They had to buy furniture. Danny had to return to duty and to arrange his part of the affair. Christina, Aggie and Pete came to help furnish the cottage. She was overwhelmed, both with the suddenness of it and with gratitude to these people who had become her family. Janice brought curtains and kitchenware. She was tearful. It shouldn't be like this. It's supposed to be the happiest day of your life. Curse this war. It will be the start of the happiest days of our lives, Janny. I just don't want to be a part anymore. And I don't really care how I go about making this promise. All that matters to me is that I can look in his eyes and promise to share whatever may come. And it matters to me that you'll be there. The few people we call friends, and I know Mama and Papa will be here in spirit. To Eleanor everything felt unreal, like her head was swimming and her feet not quite touching the ground. Her parents sent a telegram of congratulations and well wishes. Her father wired her a wedding gift of two hundred pounds. For my dearest daughter to have a start. Love, Papa. Janice insisted on flowers. She picked a simple bouquet of lily of the valley. You should have had roses. We'll have roses in the garden next year, Jan. Danny left on Tuesday. He found Johnny playing cards in the mess. He looked tired. You were away longer than planned. You missed some fun. Fred and I got to stray for convoy of trucks on the road to Calais. What are you doing on Saturday the 8th? Johnny's head snapped up. A slow smile broke out. No, are you kidding me then? I know we said you'd be my wingman, Johnny, but I have something else to ask of you. Ask away, me lad. We moved it up because our parents aren't coming back and there's no point in waiting then. You've seen the light? With her dad not here, would you walk her down the aisle? Johnny slowly stood up, walked out towards the door, stood looking out over the runways in the sunset. He rubbed his chin. Danny slapped him on the shoulder. They stood quietly and watched a lone spitfire come in, low light gleaming on its wings. What time? Half past ten. Let's have a drink on that.